In this video, I'm going to show you an app built with AppPressor. The way AppPressor works is you build your app in the App Customizer, and you can add your custom layouts, change colors, add your site logo, and customize anything about the app. And then when you're ready, you can submit to the app stores. So let's take a look at the app. Here you'll see we have a home page that displays the menu items from our app, and then at the bottom has some WordPress posts. This is fully customizable. You can make any home page you want. You could have blog posts on the home page or change the layout of that page. And you can see if we click into one of the items, such as the news item, it displays our blog posts and they're nice and fast and responsive. And then you can also display posts from certain categories and also change the way that the list is displayed. So in this example, you'll see we have a card list, which is a little bit different from the default app list that we saw previously. All the posts are fast and cached, and you can share them through various social media. Another thing that works great in AppPressor is podcasts and other audio and video. So if you have any type of sermons or podcasts or membership content, you can display those in your app and allow your app users to play that media and you can require a login for it if you like as well. And when they play the media in your app, they are able to minimize the player and still browse the app. Another great feature is being able to download the media for offline use later. So once the media is downloaded, it can be listened to or viewed offline. If you want to protect your content with AppPressor for a membership site or Learn Dash courses or whatever it is, you're able to ask users to log in before they can see certain pages. And this also uses the WordPress authentication system where that works the same way as your membership site does. You can also allow users to register. You can either let them register for free if you like and then they can log in with the same way that they log in through WordPress, or you can require that they purchase. So this would use an in-app purchase if you were doing something like charging for a subscription. You have full control over your menus. You can either use a side menu or a tab menu or both. And you can also add things like drop-down items and dividers to your menu to make it very user-friendly. So here we have all the items that are in our menu and pages that can be accessed through the app. And the icons and colors are all fully customizable. If we click on the activity feed, we can see some of the BuddyPress features in your app. So here we'll have a feed of all the site-wide activity updates. And you can interact with those items, but if you want to post to the activity, you do need to log in. So once we're logged in, we can again view the activity feed and then go ahead and click the post icon. And we can choose to add media, such as a photo to our activity update, or we can just post a text update. And it displays on the feed, and then we can interact with the other items, such as liking the items or clicking on user profiles to interact with that user. So here we can add a friend, or send a message. And if we wanted to view all of our messages, we could click on the messages item in our menu and then view the threads that we're interested in and send more messages, including emojis and media. The user on the other end will receive a push notification when they receive a new message. Other features of BuddyPress include listing the members, and you can filter those by friends, and you can click on the icons to interact with those users. We can also view groups, and we can view the group activity, group details, join a group, things like that.
If we view our own profile, we can edit some of our profile field, fields and change the avatar. Moving on to the WooCommerce features of the app, on our shop page, we can display all of our WooCommerce products. And we can choose a layout for this page using the AppPressor page builder. So we've chosen to display a carousel of categories at the top with our products listed below. You can of course modify this as much as you like. And you can choose products to display such as products from a certain category, featured products, on sale products, things like that. So if we click into a category, it's going to display products from that category. And this is searchable and then clicking on the product, we'll display that product and then we can add it to our cart. To view our cart, we can click the cart icon or the cart item in the menu. And then we can edit our cart or check out. So clicking check out will open up your website in an in-app browser where the app user can complete their purchase. And direct them, directing them to your website for purchase allows you to maintain all of your payment gateway settings shipping, taxes, and all of your checkout customizations. Another powerful feature of AppPressor is the custom HTML blocks you can add to your pages. So here you'll see a page that we created with custom content by embedding a Google map at the top and then adding custom content at the bottom. So you can add your location there and users can click into the Google Maps app to get directions to your property or you can um, just add directions at the bottom and information about your business. So for example, here we could add an image of our business, location, hours, address, things like that. These layouts are fully customizable. You can add in any arbitrary HTML or static Ionic tags such as the Ion card. You can also add links to external websites in your menu which will open up the in-app browser. Another type of page to add WordPress content to your app is the iframe page. So a lot of plugins don't support the WP API, for example, a forms plugin. So if you want to display this content in your app, you can just embed your, a, a web page using an iframe in the app. To add these to your app, you add the URL to your website page in your menu and then it'll display like this. This is using the app presser theme, removing the header and footer, and then displaying the rest of the content in an iframe. Some custom plugins work with this method, not all of them, but it's a great way to get content into your app that does not support the WP API. If we view a settings page, this is where you'll be able to add in different settings for your app, such as changing languages if you have supported translations, or also push notification segmenting. This is not available for all plans, but for plans that do have it, you can allow your users to subscribe to certain segments, such as sports, politics, or business for a news site. And then when you send out notifications to these specific groups, then these users will get them. So it's a great way to increase engagement and encourage people to not unsubscribe from notifications. If we look at LearnDash, you can click into the LearnDash courses, which are displayed, and then you can view your course. These are protected the same way they are in your website, so if you have not enrolled or been added to a course, you will not be able to see it. But if you are, you'll be able to view your lessons, topics, and quizzes. One of the cool features of AppPressor is that you can change the colors and menus and page layouts even if the app is already submitted to the App Store and on a device. So I'll give you a demonstration of this. I've changed the color of the app to green in the AppPressor App Builder, and if I refresh the app, you'll see that it turns to green. Now this works even if the app is already on a device and all you have to do is refresh the app. So you can also change the page layouts. For example, if I wanted to add or remove something from a page when it was already in the App Store, I could simply go to the AppPressor page builder and change it around. In this case, I'll remove the login toolbar. So if I remove that in the AppPressor page builder and save it, then when the app is refreshed, you'll see that the login toolbar is gone. This is really handy because it allows you to make changes to your app on the fly without having to go through the hassle of submitting an update and going through app review again and all that kind of stuff. So another thing we can demonstrate is 
adding a tab menu. So if I add a tab menu in the app presser builder, and then I refresh my app, you'll see that we have a tab menu. You can also choose to have a side menu along with a tab menu or one or the other, it's up to you.